is Ohio State and Oregon the game of the year in the Big Ten? Is Penn State going to just wreck USC? It's time to get the Big Ten squad together. You're talking ball with the Big Ten squad. From USC to Ohio State, from Michigan to Oregon, from Nebraska to Washington, it's the local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network bringing you scoops, breakdowns, and the most comprehensive preview of the upcoming Big Ten weekend. No hurt feelings and thin skin allowed. Squad up. You're part of the Big Ten squad. Welcome to the Big Ten squad, everybody. I'm Spencer McLaughlin in for Craig Scheman today. Sit back, grab your favorite beverage, join us as we get you ready for another wild weekend across the Big Ten. This episode is indeed brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Place your first $5 bet. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed, which is pretty sweet. Visit FanDuel.com to get yourself started. We have Matt Sheehan of Locked On Spartans, Jay Stevens of some show that I don't really remember, Jacob Goins, Locked On Hoosiers, Roman Tomashoff of another show I don't remember, and Zach Seiko of Locked On Nittany Lions. Uh, Locked On Buckeyes and Locked On Huskies are the two shows. No particular reason that I left those shows out because I, of course, am in uh, this particular hosting capacity as Spencer McLaughlin, neutral arbiter of college yeah. football, <laughs> as the host of Locked <laughs> On Nobody College is. Football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Spencer. That's sure. what's happening here. That's sure. exactly what is happening here. Uh, Jay, is Ohio State Oregon the game of the year, and are the Buckeyes going to win? Let's go to the first question first. Yes, it's the game of the year. We all had a circle before the season. We have it circled now, and we're all looking forward to this game. I'm glad NBC has it. It's a primetime affair, and I'm going to be watching just to see the whole, whole scene as the sun goes down, watch the sunset, but primarily the ball, man. The ball's while I'm there. Ohio State and Oregon, two good quarterbacks, two of the best teams in the country, not just the Big Ten. Do I have to answer the second question now? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, 100%. Jay. Say it with your chest. Let's go. Wow. I wish your yeah. quarterback was a little bit better. The game would have been more competitive. We still would have beat you guys, Matt, but yeah, still. No, <laughs> Why am I taking shots right now? It's my bye week. Everyone's got to take it easy on me. <laughs> it happens, Why, man. What, you, you mean like Oregon took it easy on you on Friday <laughs> night in the second hey, half? That's two weeks in a row. Y'all got smacked. By... I, you know, I understand. I shouldn't even be here right now. This is my bye week. I should be relaxing exactly. somewhere. Credit oh, to you, God. Matt, for showing up. I'm proud of you, man. Oh, I am. Man. All yeah, I was sure. just get yeah his, credit uh, credit to Matt Sheehan showing up in a way the Spartans yeah, offense yeah. never could. Correct. Thank you. Can't That's do anything. Right. No, Spencer, I am leaning more towards Ohio State winning because Ohio State comes out of the locker room in the second half and they dominate the third quarter. Really, they haven't given up a touchdown in the third quarter. So even though there's been some execution issues in the first in the first half and a couple questionable calls by Chip Kelly, they fix things in the third quarter. That's when they just really put teams away. Well, as neutral arbiter of college football here, I would never say something like Will Howard is a college version of Kirk Cousins. I would never say something like Chip Kelly what was only good on right in 2012. Those Kirk things Cousins would never, <laughs> would never, even in a sarcastic tone, oh come out of my mouth. But the other big game in the Big Ten this week, Zach Seiko locked on Nittany Lions. You travel to Los Angeles for a Rose for a regular season conference game against USC. How confident are you uh, that you go beat the Trojans? Confident, but I don't want people to necessarily just look past USC. This is going to be the best team that Penn State has faced, and it will be the second best team that they face overall, other than Ohio State. And it's the six-hour plane ride on top of it. Penn State has not had a serious, I guess if you will, uh, a, a long road trip. West Virginia was close by, and then they played all these home games consecutively. So outside of that, uh, Penn State hasn't been challenged in this regard. Roman Tomashoff locked on Huskies at Iowa this week. Do the Dogs win another game that no one thinks they can except for maybe Vegas? Hey, Spencer, I have told you this like three separate times now. This is a game I've had Washington winning since like June, July. Oh, wow. I yeah, I my my biggest thing is Washington's wow. secondary has been stellar, and if you can find a way to slow down Caleb Johnson, which is a huge task. I asked Steve Belichick about that today, and I have never heard him use the word outstanding as many times as he did today when he talked about him. So if you can find a way to do that, which they did with Khalil Mullings, they held him under 50 yards, you can find a way to do that with Caleb Johnson, I think Washington can walk out of Iowa with a W. Jacob Goins, Locked on Hoosiers. Which Division Two program are you guys playing this week? Uh, none. We play ourselves. It's the bye week. And I would say that I'm happy about it because I know we can't lose, but 
that's already been proven. So we're undefeated, still rolling. First team to punch their ticket to a bowl game. Anybody else saying that right now? No. Jacob, no. how do you run it? No. Run it. Run it. Jacob, how no, do you feel I'm... about I think it was uh, there was another podcast I saw that said they would put a nine and three Ole Miss team in over an eleven one Indiana team. I I'm not surprised. SEC, right? I mean, they're gonna get most of the love. SEC bias? We, yeah. For sure. What's we got to get to that point, though. But Indiana's schedule, it shows. 11-1, and one, I, I fail to see where the one loss is. I mean, we, you, Jay, you guys don't have us circled on the schedule going to Columbus up there, man? I just want to make go. sure. We're not wasting our time circling that date. It's not even a trap working. game <laughs> city. That's a trap game. I believe, Jacob. Let's go. Thanks, I believe Matt. I appreciate you. Speaking of, uh, speaking of trap game, Matt Sheehan of Locked On Spartans, will Michigan State find a way to lose this week? No, we're. Would you relax? <laughs> you know what? And I gotta say, I, not to go back a few minutes, but like, what was the Kirk Cousins slander all about? Like, I'd rather you insult my own mother than insult <laughs> Captain Kirk like that. My well, you know, I was just trying to find an apt comparison for a capable oh game manager God. who freezes when the lights come on. And well, I mean, he was a Big Ten champion too, and also beat Michigan because yeah, 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 yeah. And he's gotten a bunch of money in his career, but he's never gonna have one of them Super Bowl thingies. Oh, 400 million in the bank says differently. That, that equates to at least one Super Bowl as far as I can I'm buy concerned. one. You could you could buy, you could buy a ring. Zach makes an incredibly yeah. valid point. Rings he can plural. buy. One. You could buy the the Lombardi trophy for all that money, but I what was the question again? I'm sorry. I just How is Michigan State going to not lose to bye week? So, He's clearly know, still recovering man. from those two beatdowns back to back weeks. He can't <laughs> Yeah, this is what why to stay. <sighs> I know that the whole intro says, like, oh, no thin skin around here, but my skin is very thin right now. <laughs> I just lost two games with a combined score of 14 to 300 points. Like, both of my eyes are blackened and swollen right now. And finally, I can start seeing the swan go down, and I, they open up to see Spencer and Jay just making fun of me. How's the basketball team? team? Matt, how's it's the basketball not, it, team? I like that. Our hockey team's number four. If anyone was going to hockey, yeah, hockey's pretty good. Our, our oh Sunday gosh, team, I will fun. leave. Oh, I will leave the show <laughs> if hockey comes up again. So okay, why so don't we? Number two, Boston College this weekend, oh, Friday and Lord. Saturday, both at Can fun. You... It's good. How Is long there like a mute a button for the debate, for the presidential debate? Have the mute button. That... Your mics are muted. Your mics are muted. No one can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I need to have that sort of power. Uh, no, you, it's no, going to be a fun no, week. No, you don't. No. Well, well, but see, here's the thing. I didn't say you should want me to have that power. I said that I want that power because it would be fun for me. Do you see yeah, the difference here? That I absolutely do. And that's why we as a collective have vetoed that. <sighs> yeah, but I think the only guy who's... Uh, Oh, nice. Yeah, the only guy whose opinion really matters there is uh, the director of this great show. So why don't you go ahead, uh, throw Roman on mute for a moment. Still plenty more to get to here on the Big Ten Squad because uh, there, there are just a lot, of, a lot of talking points this week. But eventually, it's going to play out with real, honest-to-God football on the field. How does Oregon beat Ohio State or vice versa? How does Penn State roll USC? That is all coming up next. And coming up right now, our good friends over at Game Time. They have this new feature, everybody. It's called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier, not harder, easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Curation makes it easier to save more on anything you want from Game Time. Sports, concerts, comedy, theater, etc. They've got it all. Get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy so you know exactly what to expect upon arrival to said event. Game Time also offers their lowest price guarantee, or Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So what are you waiting for? Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E, all one word. That's Locked On College for twenty dollars off download game time today what time is it it is indeed game time how does ohio state go on the road and beat oregon as we continue on here with the big 10 squad jay stevens locked on buckeyes what's the number one thing that ryan day's team has to do to get a win on saturday night win the battle in the trenches spence you remember this very very well back in 2021 there was a guy named C.J. Verdell that Ohio State could not stop. Rumor has all. it that he's still running, my sources have told me. 
And I believe it because he was running all over Ohio State's defense that day. Ohio State made a lot of changes to the defensive coaching staff, brought in Jim Knowles. And also you have NFL talent all over the field on defense. Also on the offensive line, it's been playing a whole lot better early in the season than I expected. Spencer McLaughlin, um, Seth McLaughlin, second time in a row. Second, second time, time in a row. One year, I've said Spencer said a Seth. Seth McLaughlin, Alabama transfers, has been a phenomenal Impact, immediate impact guy for Ohio State's offensive line. If the Buckeyes win the battle of the trenches, they'll win the game. Matt Sheehan, Locked On Spartans, uh, you watched this Oregon defensive line last week. How yeah. do you feel like they match up with an Ohio State offensive line that you've also seen this year and uh, you know, you know, it went it, great? It, it, if I could just offer like you know one thing other than just being like you know the punching bag here on the show, like I do have a unique perspective in the sense I've watched both these teams in the last two weeks. I, like so, this is very fascinating. It's lightning versus thunder. Right, like Ohio State, those are the best skill position players that I think are around in the country, whether it's the running backs, the receivers, and you also want to borrow some secondary players in the defense. Those guys are outstanding, but, man, I feel like last week the Oregon trenches, they blew me away. I thought they'd be fine. I thought they'd be good, but, like, I'm, wow. Uh, your running back was having his way. He was uh, covering eight yards of ground before even getting touched. The defensive line, my goodness, lives in our backfield at some time, so – it's going to be a great battle. I think Oregon squeaks this one out just because if I've learned anything over the last few years of college football, trench play is the way to go. So that's where I lean right now. It's going to be just a fantastic Saturday, though, guys. Since the decade switched over to the year 2010, Oregon and Ohio State have matched up three times on the football field. The team that has won the rushing attack is 3-0 and oh in those particular games. I don't think that changes on Saturday. But Roman Tomashov, Locked On Huskies, you were uh, shaking your head no, 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 as Matt Sheehan <laughs> answered. Would you uh, care to verbalize? Why. Your I mic is why. live. Oh, 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 I'm allowed, I'm allowed to speak again. Spencer, yes. uh, by the way, Michael <laughs> Dyer, also still running. Uh, uh, no, he's not because he was down. No, no, he wasn't. <laughs> but in, yeah, in this was. game, or I, I would prefer that neither team win, I've I've got Ohio State here. Sorry, this is not European soccer. We play American football with <laughs> wins I and losses. I wish this was soccer, man. I'm with Roman here. I, I wish both no, teams could lose no. simultaneously. But <laughs> if I can't have fun, <laughs> no one can have fun. That's right. Exactly. Matt myself. Matt's with me here. This is this is a, a fantastic point to take. I've got I've got Jay's Buckeyes here. I'm I'm really curious to see what Oregon's offensive line will look like against this pass rush. You know, they did make some changes, Spencer. I'll give you that. They look better after struggling with Idaho and Boise State. I'm not going to let anybody forget that. But I I just think that this Ohio State offense is a lot of fun to watch as well. And I I, I think Jeremiah Smith scores two touchdowns in this game. Hmm. Hmm. He's the so Jeremiah good. Smith factor is interesting. I talked about this on, or, or sorry, not uh, me, but someone who bears a striking resemblance to myself and I think does a great job over at Locked on Ducks was talking about how Oregon secondary has been sensationally good this year. And Jabbar Muhammad is probably an NFL caliber corner. I do wonder if Oregon takes a chance and goes single high safety or if they're cover zero and you're one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, can Nico Reed or Dante Manning go 1v1 with Jeremiah Smith or Emeka Buka. my confidence level isn't supremely high, which then plays into the chess match in this game, Jay, of do, does Oregon just sit back in coverage the whole time and say, hey, we need our defensive line to dominate because we don't want to take chances with these wide receivers, even though the secondary has played really well. I think that's going to be the most interesting chess match in this game is Tosh Lupo and Chris Hampton, the co-defensive coordinators against Chip Kelly. It has to be. I mean, it has to, it has to be the thing – Jeremiah Smith is one of those guys that I've never seen before. I have never seen a true freshman come in and immediately dominate since day one. We talked about um, on Locked on Buckeyes about what his projected stats might be for the end of the year. Didn't even dawn on me that the projected numbers would beat Chris Carter's fr true freshman records for being a receiver at Ohio State. That's just how good he was projected to be before. He's already exceeding expectations. He believes that in any one-on-one -on -one situation, it's his ball. Will Howard threw an interception early in the season, I think second or third game, a one-on-one -on -one situation to Jeremiah Smith. Jeremiah Smith took the blame for that because he, he says, that's my ball. Then the next couple of weeks, he showed everybody he can make those catches in one-on-one -on -one situations. If it is one-on-one -on -one with him, it's he's going to win that. If it's one-on-one -on -one with Abuka, he's going to win that. I also wonder if this is a game – the chip Kelly decides to get the tight ends involved because so far they haven't really done much in the past game. 
been primarily blockers. G. Scott Jr. will catch Merrick. I think it's just one of those games where you get those guys hold, involved Wait, early. hold on. Back up, back, back, back up. His name is what now? Will catch Merrick. And there is not a Z right there. It's K-A-C, but it's Kaz. Don't, that don't was, ask. That is don't a ask. phenomenal name. I'm a big names guy. Yeah. Big you names pronounced guy. It, you just like roll through that too. That yes. You flawless. like blew right past it. <laughs> Let's go. You know, and we're all just sitting here in awe of your name pronunciation <laughs> yeah. abilities. Yeah, like... God. When you got to him a low out on the team too, you kind of got to get this stuff mm -hmm. done early as soon as they mm -hmm. get on campus because if not, you guys know college football fans will rip you because you can't pronounce the name correctly. Gus do Johnson think... doesn't even say Tui Malowau. He says JTT. Keep it simple. <laughs> <laughs> I, love it. I love it. I can't play. <laughs> but I do uh, think this is a tight ends game. But one of the two guys has to get involved because if not, um, those one-on-one -on -one situations, they could be 50-50 balls. Ohio State wins sometimes. Oregon wins the other. Zach Seiko locked on Nittany Lions. Uh, Penn State beats USC and hands Lincoln Riley his third loss of the year through six games. If Penn State does, Are they do the exact same thing that Michigan and Minnesota did run all over that USC defense. Bear Alexander has opted out. The front seven, particularly the defensive line, is losing depth progressively, whether by choice or not. By, I mean, I guess it's out of USC's control, but if the players are choosing to play or not choosing to play, the attrition is starting to show up for a USC defense that is much better from a season ago, obviously, but that's like putting lipstick on a pig. There was only nowhere to go but up for this USC defense. Penn State's offensive line... I saw some debates on on X Twitter saying, "Oh, you know, Penn State fans came to the defense that said, you know, Penn State's offensive line is great, or they're they're so much better than an example of a, a Northwestern." I they're they're middle of the road, unfortunately, but they still are better than USC's defensive line. And if there's some injuries to the linebacker core, front front seven a, as a whole, I mean, USC's defense with the Penn State guy as the defensive coordinator, DeAnton Lynn. I, that's the battle I'm watching for. Andy Kotelnicki versus the defensive coordinator for USC, Lynn, who was at UCLA and just had to, what, hop, skip, and a jump over to the Coliseum. Uh, so if Penn State can play a full game, because Wisconsin went out there and only played one half of football. They forgot that they had a second half. If Penn State is keen on playing full four quarters, USC could be 5-0. and oh. I, I don't think, I don't look at them as this 3-2 and two unranked team. The ball bounces a couple other ways against Michigan mm -hmm. and Minnesota. They win those games, and those are two impressive road wins, and this is a top-10 matchup. Unfortunately, that's not the case. So I look at it as Penn State is playing a pseudo top-10 USC team. Jacob Goins locked up. Oh, that, that yeah. I'm sorry. Like, I just got to give Zach some credit there. because of Sorry, I thought State you wore yourself out earlier, but go ahead. No, I got plenty <laughs> of energy left, man. Come on. Uh, so I would say if I was a Penn State coach, you just got to show up to the game on time, guys. Like, just make sure that you make kickoff because that's all that you got to do to win. I love that you're building this up as, like, you know, USC wow. just a few bounces the other way. That is fantastic work by Zach. You got to be on the staff <laughs> to get these boys dialed in. I love that. I love that. Mm, Jacob Goins uh, locked on Hoosiers. What, what What's your outsider's unbiased take? Now, I have one as well, of course. But uh, what, what, what's kind of your outsider's look at these two big games in the Big Ten? Well, I think for the Penn State game, I, they need to show me a little something. Like, I, I'm just – I'm not sold on them yet. I still think they're a really good team. I think they're extremely talented, and they're one of the better teams in the Big Ten. But they need to go and handle business in this game. Matt's saying just show up on time. Show up on time just and play the, play the whole game and dominate and put this thing away. Because as Zach was saying, yeah, USC is, is good, and you can make an argument should have won the games they lost. But – Penn State's got to prove something a little bit to me. I think they do. I'll take Penn State. And then Ohio State, Oregon, this is a prove-it game for Ryan Day as a head coach at Ohio State. Go out and get a big-time win with the more talented team, but you do have to take on an Oregon team that's gotten better, I think, over the last couple of weeks. Spencer, you wouldn't know anything about that, but they have gotten better. I know you don't watch them very much, but I think Oregon no. is a really good team. Can they win it? Yes, but if Ryan Day gets this one, Ohio State is cruising until, you know, this other team that wears red comes to town. So, other than that, yeah, that's what Nebraska? I Nebraska? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we'll take, we'll take care of them next week. Don't worry about them. They'll, they'll oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. I, so Ohio State got to show something. Ryan Day, big time moment for him. Get through Oregon. Ohio State's cruising. Here's an interesting question to answer on the other side of the break. Who needs this win more, 
to cement themselves as a coach that can win the big one? Dan Lanning or Ryan Day? I'm going to ask every single person that is here for the third segment coming up next. And right now, I'm going to talk about FanDuel. Why? It's America's number one sports book. Do you hear Jacob say that uh, he thinks so and this team could win the game and think to yourself, you know what? I don't know that Jacob knows anything about college football. I just want to go bet against him. Well, FanDuel.com is the place to do that. NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with two hundred dollars in bonus bets guaranteed when you place first five dollar bet guaranteed you don't even have to be right you can be as smart as some of us are sometimes with the score predictions that we roll out on a weekly basis but you get the guaranteed 200 in bonus bets when you place your first five dollar bet you want to bet college football FanDuel is the place to do it. You want to bet anything else? FanDuel also the place to do it. Go check out America's number one sports book at FanDuel.com. Wrapping up this week's edition of the Big Ten Squad, we still have Matt Sheen of Locked On Spartans, Jay Stevens, Locked On Buckeyes, Jacob Goins, Locked On Hoosiers, and Roma Tomashoff of Locked On Huskies. We lost Zach Seiko of Locked On Nittany Lions because he's just that confident in Penn State, I think, maybe. But a uh, question I teased on the other side, I want to get to that from all four of you, Matt. Who needs this win more, Ryan Day or Dan Lanning? Let's just go with Dan Lanning, just because he hasn't had that marquee regular season win yet, and you can't run before you walk, of course, so no conference title games that he's fallen short in or anything like that. So I'm just going to go with that. Granted, he hasn't been at Oregon for as long as Ryan Day has been at Ohio State, but that's what I'm going to go with, especially with this game being at home. you got to take advantage of that, Dan Lanning. So, yeah, this would be a big statement win, whereas Ryan Day, like, he has had some solid regular season victories. Like, you know, he got to mother F, ho, ho, caught myself there, Lou Holtz after that big win last year. So, but, so yeah, I'm going to go with Dan Lanning there. Mr. Jay? Lockdown would be very happy with me saving myself. <laughs> yes, one, one, 100%. Yeah, Jay, uh, your response to that question. Good luck. Uh, give me a second. Um, <laughs> yeah, reset. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Um, Dan Lanning. I think if Ryan Day and Ohio State had lost to Notre Dame last year or if they had struggled or lost to Penn State over the past couple of years on the road, I probably would have said Ryan Day. Ryan Day has won numerous big-time road games in the regular season, so he's already shown that he can make that happen. I got to say Dan Lanning needs this win more than Ryan Day, at least in this conversation for this topic. Jacob. I uh, kind of gave my answer away in the previous segment, but it's Ryan Day for me. It's Ryan Day because they are the more talented team. I think they have bigger aspirations. Yes, Oregon still wants to compete for a national championship, but I think Ohio State has a better chance to do that. And we've seen in the regular season, Ryan Day has fallen short against the one team that they're supposed to beat the last couple of years. And I just don't know how well it's going to go over in Columbus. Jay, you may be able to help me out here if you go out and lose this game because there are some tough games still on that schedule. And again, I can't stress this enough. Ohio State's the better team. I think it's Ryan Day, man. He's still got to prove a little something to me. Roman, care to uh, chime in on your favorite oh, team? I Oh, 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 I certainly do. Uh, Jacob makes a really good point when he says that uh, Ryan Day hasn't beat the team that he's supposed to. Uh, Dan Lanning has also gone bow and three. Oh, sorry. I mean, oh, and three against the, mm. team, the team he's supposed to beat more than anybody else. Brandon, mute uh, his mic. <laughs> Matt mentioned a, a conference change. He made a count. <laughs> he, he made a count at least. Good, good on <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that I have two mutes and everybody else has zero. This is great. I, I love this. There's definitely no bias in that outcome. Not no, at all. no, not at all. Not at all. Jeez. But I, I, I do think it's Dan Lanning. I, you know, I, I, I took a second there to look at some of his signature air quotes wins against Utah and Colorado and Liberty. So, you know, say, say what you will about, that so I would say Dan Lanning because also as Spencer you and I had this discussion off the air the other day uh very nicely Oregon has pushed all its chips into the table this year they are they are all in on getting that natty for Phil Knight and they they need it this year and if they can't get past Ohio State who's to say they're going to do it if they meet up in the conference championship game or who's to say that they can beat a Georgia or anybody else that they might face if they can make it to the CFP if they don't win this game I, I think I also come down on the Dan Lanning side of the question because it would be the biggest win 
of the Dan Lanning era. Now, I, I push back on the notion that he's never won a big game in his career. That's just flat out not the case. Um, but it would certainly be the biggest one. And it would be a welcome to the Big Ten moment as well to kind of send a message not just to Columbus, but to the rest of the conference of, hey, we're, we're, we're not messing around over here. Like, we, we are here and we are ready to play at the highest level at this very moment. There is an all-in feel for, for Oregon this year. I think that exists for Ohio State. And one of the reasons I've compared these two teams a lot in the offseason is that both of them had a bunch of key returners that could have gone to the NFL. Mm -hmm. For Oregon, those are guys like Jordan Birch, who just tore up literally the entire Michigan State offensive line on Friday it's night. Not for, home about. A lot of fun. It, it was JTT for uh, Ohio State or Jeff Bossa for Oregon. Or like You can keep going down the list, and you got close to half a dozen guys on both teams that mm -hmm. could have gone to the NFL, came back instead, and you don't have to replace those those guys' production from the prior year, and you get to have them on the field for one last season. So uh, I think I agree that the answer is Dan Lanning. But there are other games in the Big Ten this week that uh, we'll wrap up with here. And uh, Rutgers, speaking of surprise teams-ish, now I'm not shocked that Rutgers is sitting at 4-1 and one here, Jacob, and they are playing host to Wisconsin this week at home. Less than a field goal point spread Indiana Rutgers are probably two teams that not a lot of people had on their bingo card right now as a combined 10 and one who wins. Yeah, that's a really fair point. And look, I think Rutgers is it's we in the big 10, we all fell into a trap of, Oh, it's just Rutgers, right? They, they're not going to be great. They're not going to have the talent. Well, college football's changed people. It's changed. And teams like Rutgers or Vanderbilt out of the SEC can just all of a sudden become good with addition of just a few players. And so look, Wisconsin has just been up and down. Yeah, they've had the injury problems, but no, give me Rutgers, man. Absolutely. Give me Rutgers to get the win in this matchup. Matt Sheehan locked on Spartans. Uh, the Friday night game, Northwestern travels yeah. to Maryland that's right. to play. Sickos and um, that, yep, that's, that's probably right. enough about that particular matchup. Here's a more interesting question. Purdue or UCLA? Who wins a Big Ten game first? Because these teams look bad. I need to see a schedule, man. Because I have got uh, them pulled up. I'm so glad you do asked. They Purdue play each other next week by any chance? Because that could be our best shot of getting a win here. Nope, uh, they do down. not play each no, other. They... Purdue. Uh. It looks like this: at Illinois, hosting Oregon, host Northwestern, at Ohio State, host Penn State, at Michigan. Okay, they'll win at Michigan State. At Indiana last yes, week that's of you. That's for you. the regulars. Brandon, <laughs> <laughs> use Mike. Uh, so <laughs> what? What? <laughs> no, no, not yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. All right. So go ahead, Matt. You got. Oh, never mind. So uh, oh. that's the Purdue schedule. Here's the UCLA schedule. Are uh, they host Minnesota this week off their big win against USC at Rutgers at Nebraska? Host Iowa at Washington. Host USC. Host Fresno State. Who's winning a Big Ten conference game first? That's how we're wrapping up today's show, everybody. Purdue or UCLA? Purdue just because they play Northwestern three games out of what you just listed. And I was counting in my head when you were rattling off UCLA schedule. I didn't even count Owen, let alone within three weeks. So, um, yeah. God, I wanted this Oregon at Purdue game to be a trap game, but like in, in no world. Like on paper, happen. on paper it is. I talked about that well, all and, and summer. Then you watch five seconds of a game and then it's like, oh, yeah. This never yeah, this like, rough. yeah it's, it is rough. It is rough in uh, West Lafayette at the moment. Yeah. Jay Stevens, uh, UCLA or Purdue, who wins a Big Ten game? You know what? Forget it. Who wins a game first? Because UCLA oh, plays yeah. Fresno State last week of the regular season. I don't know if they're winning that game. Schedules too. Let's go into the 2025 UCLA. Now. I got to go UCLA. <laughs> I'll just hop in here real quick and just say I got to go with the Bruins. I have no faith in Purdue at all. Okay. None. It's mm. bad in West Lafayette. I don't know what's going on. I can't think they're going to win anything until may maybe next season. Could be the year Maybe after that. next season. Ouch. Uh, Jacob Goins, Locked On Hoosiers. Uh, your team will play one of these bottom dwellers in the Big Ten. That well, is Purdue the last week of the regular season. Any no, concern there? The one, no. No. And we already played the other one, right? We Remember, we went to UCLA and beat right. them. Which, we, we thought it was great. Oh, what a huge and, win. Hey, yep. hey, went at the Rose Bowl. 
Where did the Rose Bowl, Rose Bowl victory? Thing. That's right. Yeah, I'm going to take UCLA. It does. It does. You, yeah, you know, you know. No, it does mean something. And <laughs> I'm going to take UCLA because I can't pick Purdue for anything, but they're just bad. Now, it would be the most Indiana thing in the world to <laughs> – somehow only have one loss go into this game in <laughs> Bloomington, by the way, and let Purdue come in and that be their first big 10 win of the season. I'm you not have to fire it. Signetti. Signetti would have to be fired. <laughs> and, and, and then the spot. He He's done. Have and, to fire and then he'd be the next and then You guys coach. had to hire him. I mean, it just, it yeah. just quickly. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I was, yeah. was going to say he'd go to that. Florida. <laughs> nah, he's the next head coach of Florida, man. If, he, if we so fire him. on the show. Oh, I hate it here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, Matt Call Sheehan, you, ma- you made a really good point about answering the question, when will these teams next win a game? Should we be pulling up the 2025 non-conference no, slate? I don't yeah. think that's crazy because no, no that wasn't a joke. Like, that was the, a yeah, I kind of thought it was at first because that's you know 80 percent of the stuff that comes out of your mouth. But I, I think that in this instance, that that could that could be the case. Thank you. All right. See, I I make a good point once every three weeks. So yes, thanks, Spencer. And Thank then you nice remove day. your hat randomly every now and then for reasons that I get none of us can figure Spencer. out. It's a- yeah, uh, Roman, would would you care to weigh in on the uh, the bottom dweller the bottom dweller debacle for these two teams? Because there there is a world where they are going to lose every game they play this year. Th- thanks for asking if I wanted to, because honestly, no, I don't. <laughs> but and that's the you're, show. You're, you're, right. put, you're putting me on the spot. Yeah, let's here, cut it so. there, Brandon. Let's just <laughs> let's say that's the Roll Big credits. Ten squad for the week. <laughs> Woo! No, uh, I. I, I, I really have been like throughout all of this, I haven't been able to come up with an answer. So I'm going to go with Purdue and it's because I had, I had to have the, the displeasure of watching Jack Lausch play quarterback a couple weeks ago when he was here at Huston stadium. Uh, Jacob, he looked pretty good against your, your Indiana defense. That was, um, yeah, Whatever. that's all I'll say about that. Whatever. Uh, but <laughs> I, I was, I was not impressed with Northwestern either. So I just, I want to say it for that reason alone. I, I can't wait to watch Fresno State beat UCLA in that same regard. That's going to be absolutely hilarious. Uh, but yeah, no, I just give, give me Purdue, and that's the only reason why I, I don't think either of these teams will win a game for the rest of the season. Well, Zach Anderson, Locksheimer, or Yoxheimer of Locked On Bruins, uh, in true UCLA fashion, didn't show up today. So uh, it's it's all too fitting. That's going to do it for the Big Ten squad. Matt Sheehan, Locked On Spartans. Jay Stevens, Locked On Buckeyes. So Jacob Goins, Locked On Hoosiers. Roman Tomashoff, Locked On Huskies. I'm Spencer McLaughlin, Locked On College Football, and Locked On Ducks as well. Follow and subscribe to your favorite Big Ten teams. They're everywhere. We'll be covering your favorite team every day throughout the season. And don't forget... All of you covered on the conference, or Craig will rather. I've got you covered over on Locked On College Football, I miss part it. of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Come back, Craig. Please. <laughs>